Radio. Let's go. Welcome to the war room. We got Ted, Kim, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you want to end up one or two hour show to keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level? Both with the topics, sort of like the rubber. When it's game time, they like the fad five during prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys diversified and educated. What up, War Room family? You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports and Sports the Book on that WRS Podcast Network. I'm Devin McMillan, and for the first few minutes of today's show, I'm going to be flying solo, but a little later on, we're going to have the homies Jimmy the Blueprint Williams and B. Austin in the studio as usual. Uh, The NBA All-Star break is coming and gone, so we'll recap the weekend in Toronto, talk about some trade deadline deals Discuss the NBA season moving forward and more, so keep it locked right here. And if you want to holler at us throughout the show, join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about 30 minutes when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. But before we get started, as usual, we're not live on the air. We want to remind you guys to check out the entire War Room Sports Podcast Network. Just visit warroomsports.com and click the WRS Podcast Network tab or listen on War Room Sports mobile app or on iTunes. You'll find some of the best shows the net has to offer, sports and non-sports, and you can listen to archive episodes of our show, The War Room, The Broad Street Line, The Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show, After Further Review, The No Look Podcast, Scientist Sports Lab, Network's newest show for all you foodies out there, John Appetit, and a whole lot more. But look, before we get started, I would be remiss if I did not give a shout out to one of our brother, one of the five heads of War Room Sports, <clears throat> Akil Bayon. Uh, you guys here probably know him affectionately as Doc Bay. Well, now Doc Bay is not just an affectionate moniker. It is now a reality. Shout out to the brother Akil for finishing his doctorate in education. So we are proud to say that the War Room and War Room Sports have in its midst a PhD. um, And and that's what's up. You know, between us, we have a lot of degrees. But Doc Bay, you know, he took, took it another step further. And and we're proud of the brother. So shout out to Doc Bay of Sports on getting that doc. All right. So look, <clears throat> it's been a crazy week. Uh, the fellas and I, you know, we 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 didn't attend All Star Weekend in Toronto, uh, but we did travel this weekend. We had our our, our War Room Sports uh, annual retreat. And since it was All-Star Weekend, you know, everything was filled with All-Star festivities. And we're going to talk a lot about that uh, during today's show. Um, But before we do that, I'm going to let everybody know what happened this week while y'all were on that grind. And as usual, while you're on the grind is brought to you by DirecTV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including that NFL Sunday ticket that you will need for next football season, Go to our website, boardroomsports.com, click on the Direct TV logo, and order yourself a better TV experience at a discounted War Room Sports sign-up rate. If you call yourself a sports fan, then you got to have Direct TV. All right, news out of Cleveland. The Browns, um, they unveiled their plans to give Jim Brown a, a statue, and they did this on the Legends' 80th birthday. So out in front of uh, First Energy Stadium, Jim Brown will be immortalized by the Cleveland Browns. And I think this is a good thing. I'm one of those people who think um, sports may have gotten out of hand with the amount of folks that they give statues to. I mean, RG3 has a damn statue down at Baylor, and I think that's just ridiculous. But, hey, I mean, it's a university. He was the guy at your university, take, he took that program to places that had never been. He won the Heisman Trophy. So 
so be it. That's what you want to do. Um, and there's been some even in the professional ranks that I think are a little bit questionable. Um, the Lakers have so many statues sitting out in front of Staples Center. But when you think about it, you know, there have been a lot of NBA legends that are coming through uh, the doors of, of the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, Shaq is about to get one, and I'm pretty sure in a few years they'll have plans to unveil uh, a Kobe Bryant statue. So there's a lot that I, I don't mind, um, but I think you have to transcend your sport in in a lot of ways to be eligible to get a statue. I don't think, you know, just because you made the Hall of Fame in a certain city that they should erect a statue of you. But Jim Brown is different. You know, Jim Brown, by many accounts, if you ask any old head out there, is probably the greatest NFL player who's ever lived, um, the greatest running back who's ever lived. Um, and what he did outside of the realm of his sport uh, speaks volumes as well. And you have to, you have to, you know, you have to account for things like that. You know, Jim Brown was an activist, you know, in the African-American community. Um, he, he wanted things to be better, but on the playing field, you know, in, in only nine seasons, he rushed for 12,312 yards he held a 5.2 yards per carry uh, average, and he was also named a pro bowler in every single season that he played. Um, since he retired, there hasn't been a Browns player to actually wear his number 32. Um, of course, he's in the Hall of Fame, so this is just basically the icing on the cake for him, you know, to be immortalized in front of the stadium. He is 80 years old, and to my I don't think Jim Brown has any serious health problems, so he should be around to finally see this statue um, erected. So shout out to Jim Brown. If not the best to ever do it, one of the best to ever do it. It depends on your stance and, and your argument of players between errors. All right. Moving on to something a little less positive. <laughs> Nike ended up uh, – severing their deal with Manny Pacquiao because Pac-Man made some disparaging remarks earlier in the week about um, homosexuals. And I have a quote. He says, quote, have you seen any animal having male to male or female to female relations? If you have male to male or female to female relationships, then people are worse than animals. Of course, you know, this started a firestorm. Uh, Nike did what companies do these days. And, you know, the first thing companies set out to do when somebody's bringing controversy to their brand is to sever ties with that person. In Pac-Man's case, I, you know, I always look for, for things, you know, when companies try to get on their moral high ground. In a lot of these cases, there's always something where you figure this company really doesn't have anything to lose. So, of course, they get to look like they're on their moral high ground. They get to look like they're standing up for a cause. But Pac-Man is basically a washed-up boxer. You know, I don't know how much more value he brings to the Nike brand at this point in his career anyway. He's more intent right now on becoming um, – on, on his political career in the Philippines, um, which is why these – uh, comments were made in the first place. So what did Nike really do, you know, besides get some great publicity for themselves because they look like they jumped to the rescue of um, a giant cause out there. So I don't know, you know, Nike looked like they did a little something. And we got the homie Jimmy, the blueprint in the studio with us now. Jim, what are your thoughts on this whole Manny Pacquiao Nike thing? Yo, uh, I mean, unless all, um, you know, uh, Filipinos are going to stop wearing Nike, I don't see the big deal. But, <laughs> you know, also, uh, like you just said, he's running for office over there, and he has a huge constituency that agrees with him. So he, what's he supposed to say? Um, right. But he had to know this was going to come. He had to know this. But I found it interesting is how he doubled down. Like, you know, yeah, he, he didn't down he back him. off the comments. He definitely did. So salute to him for that. Uh, whether I agree with him or not, uh, you know, he didn't run from it like everybody else does. Right. And and, and what Jimmy's talking about, he um, made a statement 
He said, I'm sorry for hurting people by comparing homosexuals to animals. Please forgive me for those I've hurt. I still stand on my belief that I'm against same-sex marriage because of what the Bible says, but I'm not condemning LGBT. I love you all with the, with, with the love of the Lord. God bless you, and I'm praying for you. That, that, that was the, like, <laughs> I'm praying for you because something's wrong with you type. I'm praying yeah, for no, you. I know. I know. <laughs> that it's wasn't I'm just brutal. praying for you because you're my brother. It's like I'm praying for you because I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to get you delivered. I'm trying, <laughs> trying to it's, get it up out of you. It's interesting, man, because it's sort of like we live in a world where you're kinda of like forced to lie or hide your natural feelings. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. You have the right to say whatever you want, but you have to be willing to deal with the consequences of saying whatever it is you say. Yeah. And, and 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 back to like what I was saying about Nike not really having that much to lose. It even states here in an article that Pacquiao was more of a billboard for Nike, you know, because he wears the swoosh on his shorts, on his shoes and stuff like that. They said he's not really a true revenue stream because few Pacquiao items actually reach the market. So, you know, Nike, yeah. this is just a guy that Nike had, you know, they're just putting some stuff on him because he's visible. But, you know, he, he's not like LeBron said these comments Then Nike, you know, they, they, they're they going to their statement would have been, well, we're looking farther into this to see, you know, what Absolutely. actually happened. And yeah, if Michael Jordan says this, Nike might even they might not even make a comment. So yeah, they might agree with him. Yeah, Nike being a bad Pacquiao, yeah, Pacquiao has a fight. I think it's April, April 9th or April 19th. One or the other. He's fighting Timothy Bradley again for who knows why. So let's see. Let's see if uh, anybody gives him. Let's see if he come out and rebuck anything. Nobody gonna give him no bread now, but yeah. you know they're gonna be picketing the the Rainbow Mafia. He's gonna be, he gonna be like Craig fight. Hodges in the three point contest. <laughs> He's gonna have him all black, look like Mike Tyson with a towel around his neck. All yeah. right, so um, let's talk a little bit about Ronda Rousey, man. You know it was well documented. We spoke on the show about when she got her boot stretched um, a few months back. Uh, but things are just, you know, because she's starting to do interviews now and she was on the Ellen DeGeneres show and she was talking about how she felt after the fight. And man, Jim, I'm looking at her comments and I'm reading some of her quotes. It looks mm-hmm. like even in her own mind, like being the greatest undefeated female fighter in the world was like the only thing that she identified with. Like that's the only thing that made her for for a lack of better words, like herself, because she said, quote, honestly, I was sitting in the corner. Um, this was in the post-fight medical room. And I was like, what am I anymore if I'm not this? <laughs> she said, I was literally sitting there thinking about killing myself. And I'm, I'm thinking about that. And I'm like, is this the same person that we saw, you know, challenging Floyd to a fight and all this kind of stuff? Like, what are your thoughts on her self esteem level after you know, yeah. getting her I mean, ass it shows for the first that time. it shows that all the bravado was um just a way to cover up her low self esteem for one. Right. Because I mean, she got completely humbled because I mean she got dominated in the fight, you know, um and she talked so much trash leading up to that, not only about her opponent but like you said, trying to fight Floyd and but she's been disrespectful since like day one. I mean, that's part of her brand. She was the quote unquote pretty girl who could fight and talked a bunch of trash. So right. she got humbled and she also got to the point where, you know, um it's twenty sixteen, so anytime you lose anything, you get Jordan faced and memed all over. So she mm-hmm. kinda caught it there too. And when you talk the way you talk, you know, a la you, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you know, this is why people pay to see Floyd because everybody wanted to see him take this loss, which he never took. So you know, but to hear these kind of comments, it's like, yo, you were just covering up the fact that you don't have any self-esteem at all with the trash talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, it's hard for me to feel sorry for her because of the way she the way she acted. You know what I mean? You built this brand. Right. I mean, but for for me, it's like there's nothing to feel sorry for anyway. Okay, you lost one fight. You're not going to be undefeated for the rest of your career. You still are the biggest thing in the sport. You still, you know, make – gobs of money from the sport. She even said, you know, because her boyfriend, Travis Brown, is a UFC fighter, and he was standing by her side that day, you know, after the fight. She's like, I looked uh-huh. up at him, and I was just like, I need to have his babies. I need to stay alive. So, it's like, she's looking Whoa! at this point 
to not commit suicide. And, you know, some people kind of dismiss these comments, but I think they were real. She was wiped away tears as she was saying this stuff on, on Ellen's show. And I'm like, you know, like you said, like her self-esteem level has to be so low that the only thing you thought of yourself was this monster that you've created, this fame that you've gotten, which might have been a part of the reason why you got your ass kicked in the first place, you know. Yeah. The, the craft started to look like it was taking a back seat to the movies. And I just saw, you know, when we were on our little uh, trip this weekend. I'm watching the whole Sports Illustrated uh, cover model competition thing. And she ended up winning with two other girls to get on the, the, the cover of SI's yeah. swimsuit edition. So, like, she's doing a whole lot of other things. And I'm not one of those people that, you know, people can multitask. I don't know if that's taken away from gym time or anything, but you're being more visible. You know, you seem more cocky <laughs> every time people see you. And then this is the reaction you have when, when you get your boot stretched. And the, and the crazy part about it is her father committed suicide when she was eight years old. So, yeah, I, I, I don't mean, know if, you know, if she draws know, her crazy, lack of self-esteem from, from that. That's the crazy but, part, though. That is the crazy mm-hmm. part. The part, crazy part is, no one in MMA retires undefeated. That just doesn't happen. This is right. not like boxing, you know, where Floyd does that, what have you. It's like no one retires undefeated in MMA. It just, like, rarely, rarely right. happens. Now, you know, you got John Jones, who had, he still has a loss, but it was his qualification. But no one real the greatest have losses because that's the kind of sport it is. Right. You can get caught with anything. So And, and, and like, then, like, even even in boxing, that's rare. You know, that's why Floyd's that's, the seat that's, that's is what true. it is that's right true. now. Because in that's boxing, true. you can get, you know, you can get caught with a punch. Floyd got caught with something in the Shane fight. Shane couldn't finish. Floyd recovered. His record mm-hmm. is safe. But, like, you, in MMA, it's even more of a risk because you're not just getting yeah, caught. Yeah, yo, it's some of the greatest, on. You some of the, some of the greatest two, mixed oh, martial Shane. artists have nine and ten losses, yo. Right. Like, that's part. But it's all about how you, re- how you respond and what you do in that. And, you know, I guess, you know, I guess she didn't watch enough Rocky growing up. <laughs> I know it's about yeah yeah Rockton told a million times a million of his quotes is about what you do after you get knocked down because Rock know he yeah. sure know about getting his ass knocked down. Yeah, so um, she know what done it. Yeah. Ronda Rousey, you know, you, I, I don't know, like like Jim was saying earlier, man, the the way that she goes about her business, the cockiness, and you know, just the way that she talk, man. This just shouldn't be how you respond to a loss. So I'm, I'm going to give you one of these. You be ashamed of yourself. The way you yourself. I hope you don't murk yourself. Even if you murk yourself, I'm, I'll give you another one for doing that. So. Yo. <laughs> you know how I go. <laughs> All right. So look, man, it goes from that to. Even worse, man. Soccer. <laughs> Football. Whatever oh. you call it, where you live. We've always talked about how serious this game is to the fans. You know, all the soccer riots that go on and, you know, just just how hard they take things in the, in this sport around the world. Well, it's not just the fans because a referee, Cesar Flores, has, he was shot to death. He was shot multiple times by a soccer player that he red carded and sent off the pitch. This guy went into the locker room, went into his bag, retrieved his gun, returned to the field during the game, and shot the referee dead on the field. Did he, did he tell him before he left, like, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to shoot all y'all? Uh, did he – you said, did he uh, – white man can't jump it? White I man can't jump, yeah. I don't know if he did that, but, yo, this this is this is crazy, This is. Man. But before I comment on it, let me ask you a question, though. Did the ref get the original call right? I, hey, I didn't see the game. You know, I have really no interest really in seeing the I game. Got, <laughs> I, I guess that doesn't matter. I mean, you shouldn't lose your life if you didn't get a bad call. You know what I'm it saying? It matters but, to know. this player. It matters to him. There's but, a couple um, times that Ed Hockley, like, but even beyond that, right? Let me let us think about this. So there's some last boy scout. The, uh, he walked off the field, went to the locker room. He sent them off. Yeah, he basically he got. Up. I guess this is their language for getting ejected. Sent the red card. And he sent them off. 
my question is, at no point do you realize that this is a bad decision? Yo, this is some, um, some Matt Barnes type stuff right here, man. Like It's premeditated. You, know, you go into the locker room, I'm going to get my gun just because you got kicked out of a game. So you got kicked out of a game. Now you're about to get kicked out of life because you didn't ran and killed this referee at a game in front of all of these people. So first, you know, he roofed you from the game. Now you're about to get roofed from life. Is it all worth it? Like, I don't yeah. get how you get that angry. I've been angry enough to want to steal a couple of refs. Hell, flag football, yeah, I rumbled a ref before. <laughs> but I'm not going to go to my bag is, and get a weapon and try to kill the dude. One of our sayings applies here, man. Yo, he should have huddled. Yeah, he definitely should have huddled. He 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 should have huddled. Like, yeah, yeah. Boy wanted yeah. to no huddle. The fact the fact, the fact that he went to the hurry up offense is gonna ruin his life. <laughs> I I don't get it, man. I just can't. I can't fathom like even being a diehard fan of some teams and some sports. I can't fathom doing anything remotely similar as a fan and I damn sure mm-hmm. can't you know we've played plenty of sports in our lifetime and we love the games that we played I can't imagine yeah. doing anything remotely similar you know as a player as well especially you know in, in his case he had much more to lose than just you know the average player but yeah so this happened yeah. in um, the, capital, the, the capital of Cordoba in, in Argentina on Sunday um very unfortunate. Crazy, so, uh, man. Definitely. Rest in peace to the ref, man. You know, yeah. I made a little Fans couple of jokes. But, you know I mean, you got to get these jokes yeah. off. But even beyond getting these jokes off, though, man, rest in peace because no one yeah. deserves to die even if they get the call wrong, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, so this player, the soccer player. Man. You should be ashamed of yourself. The way you yourself. Yeah. Crazy. And the funny thing about it is, in the reports that I've seen, Jim, I haven't seen them give the soccer player's name yet, and I'm wondering why that is. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're going. They scared of a response, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. They they said he was shot three times: the head, the chest, and the neck. Damn. And. And he injured another player, so it might have been some ricochet action or just some bad shooting or something like that. That's just too much. That's definitely too much. But look, Yo, man, uh, we got a we got a, a comment in the, um, on Twitter from at Casey Mack. He says, "Uh, Ronda Rousey makes Cam Newton look like a winner." Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I don't oh, know man. about that. You know, Cam would have stayed. Did, for, they, he stayed on the podium for two more minutes. He might have murked this up. <laughs> they both got that mean work though. Especially with especially with um, Chris Harris Jr. in the back talking trash. Like Cam probably had to leave before he <laughs> before he did something he regretted. Like, but no, nah, yeah, she definitely she she definitely takes sore losing to a whole new level. All right, so we're gonna get into some birthdays. Jim, you wanna give the birthdays or you want me to give the birthdays? No, you got it. you got a good brother. All right, we're gonna get into some some birthdays real quick. And as all of you out there who know, and and for those who don't, like, you know, get from under that rock, tune into the war room on a regular basis, yada, 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 and all that good stuff. But look, birthdays are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Top quality results driven websites at a incredibly affordable prices. Financing options are available. So just visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267 205 4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them War Room Sports. It's my Central. birthday. Yay. Hey, and, and even on them discounted rates, you can still finance that. So you tell them War Room Sports sent you. And if you ain't got it all, you tell them you still want to finance it. And they will work it out for you. But we'd like to give birthday shout out to uh Jason Maxiel who who turns thirty-three. Um funny, Jason Maxiel, he's playing over in like China or somewhere now. He was in a video last week because it was this dirty Chinese player who came down the, the 
court and like cheap shot at him. So Jason Maxiel goes running after the dude. But it's one of those things where he actually caught up to the guy. Could have caught him if he wanted to, but it it was one of those slowdowns, those get in between us slowdowns so hold somebody could back. grab him. Yeah, hold one of them back. hold me back slowdowns. Like I like, oh Jason. But uh, shout out to him on his birthday, even though he tried to act like a tough guy, a little bit of a coward. Um, shout out to probably one of the most admired guys in sports and sports history, and that's Andre Karolinko, who turns 35. And if you don't know why Andre Karolinko is admired, then you don't really listen to our show enough. Um, Andre Karolinko, once a year, from gets a, a hall pass, if you will, from his – Russian pop star wife where he can go out and have sex with uh, other women. I don't know how long this hall pass is every year, but he gets one every year. So, you know, that's why he's one of the most admired guys in sports. Um, Shout out to him. Um, His birthday is is, is now, so maybe that's when he gets his pass. Uh, Shout out to former Washington professional football team center John Giesick, who turns 53. Uh, one of the Hawks. Um, shout out to a linebacker from your beloved Denver Broncos, Jimmy. Simon Fletcher turns 54 today. Number 73, Simon Fletcher, let's go. He had a dumb uh, number to be a linebacker. Um, <laughs> did he did he convert or something from something else? Because why was his number 73? Yeah, he, he played he played on the D-line as well as linebacker. He was one of those, uh, those guys that actually did okay. a little bit of both. One of them hybrid Same. cats. <laughs> yeah, he was back there with Carl Mecklenburg, Atwater, and Dennis Smith, and we had a little a little defense. And, and speaking of defensive linemen, uh, shout out to Jared Allen, who announced his retirement today. Uh, before he retired, he was actually the NFL's active sack leader with 136. Um, so shout out to him. He tried, He gave it one more try with the Panthers, made it to the Super Bowl, didn't win it, so he's calling it a career. Um, Jared Allen was pretty good. Maybe we'll do a. Uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll maybe we'll uh, throw him a HOF or FOH since he's retiring. See what the uh, people. Yeah, see what the people got to say. You know how people are. They they read that he got 136 sacks. They'll put anybody in the damn hall. Um, and lastly, another linebacker from the same era as Simon Fletcher. Gary Reasons from the New York Giants. He turns 54 as well. So we'd like to give a nice big war room salute to all of these folks on their birthdays. Happy birthday. Yay! All right. Before we move on, we got B. Austin in the, in the in the fold as well. What up, B? What's good, brothers? It seems Not that much, uh, let me February tell these people 18th is linebacker's birthday. Yeah, yeah, it's line, yeah, because President's Day was Monday. <laughs> Today is like Linebackers Day. But let me uh, let everybody know real quick before we move on to some hot topics, uh, how they can get in touch with us and what they need to do on a daily basis. You guys can check out our website, worldroomsports.com. While you're there, take your time, look around, click on the Contact Us tab, send a message about the company, the show, or to inquire about sponsorship, advertising opportunities, joining the next network or any other business you might have. With War Room Sports for general inquiries, email us, info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, click on the memorabilia tab, support us, buy some War Room Sports merchandise, click the blog tab to read our latest articles in the All's Fair and Sports and War blogs, and click the respective icons and tabs. Check our Facebook page to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere on social media. To so subscribe to our iTunes podcast or watch our webcast at War Room Sports TV. To listen to the WRS Podcast Network and to download our free War Room Sports mobile app to get everything I just mentioned right there on the go. So, look, if you want to talk to us now during the show, join the JW Philly Realty chat room right now at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. To enter the chat room, just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to do that, or if you don't already have one, you can sign in through your Facebook and Twitter accounts and while you're at it. Just make sure you click follow. That'll get you updates and reminders about any changes to the show during the week. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. But if you want to call in and speak with us, the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline is now open. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. All right. So uh, we got... uh, 
we got the homie Tobias on the line. So before we jump into these hot topics, we'll get the homie on the line. Tobias, what's going on, bro? You in the war room? Hey, I'm th- I could be better. Uh, <laughs> what's up, man? Oh, I know it. If yeah, I see, team hey, make that trade, you want it? Hey, if I knew what kind of car guard former and uh, John Paxson drove, I might call some of the goons on the west side of Chicago to holler at those cars for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, gosh. All right. I got a rant on these goons. All right. When they tried to Doug McDermott, I was against that one because we knew what he was about. Rough. We knew Tony Snell sucked. We knew these guys are so conservative, and now they talking about they want to re-sign Paul Gasol, the guy with two lead feet who couldn't even defend us. He could defend Barry White, the late Barry White, right now. And the man been dead ten years. This guy, it's like, can someone please tell these guys that resigning a like a uh, a thirty-five, thirty-six-year-old big man who cannot defend a corpse? It might not for for uh, over ten million dollars a year. It might not be a good idea. Who who did you like? Cause, you know there were rumors out there. Who did you want them to go after? Dude, I just wanted to blow the thing up. It's over. Oh, so you just <laughs> wanted like to tear it over. down and 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 start it over. Well, well, my thing is is that. So it, meaning you, like, you wouldn't you wouldn't mind if 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 they had gotten power out of there, just for some. Oh yeah, I was kind of hoping. Yeah, because the thing is is that they can't attract free agents, the big name free agents. And we already know Kevin Durant going to park out and team up with the Warriors. Uh, you know that. But, uh, but it's like the fact that it, it, it's not even about the phrase. It's about being conservative for making trades. There have been reported years ago that when they could have had Lamar, well, we did trade him for Tyrus Thomas, but he still wanted to be a bull. We could have given up Joe Kim Noah. They didn't make the deal. They liked the players. Had to re-sign Taj Gibson, give him all that money. The problem is they fall in love with these average players that they sign. And now when it's time to get rid of people, they're getting older, you, you can barely get a ham sandwich for them. Right. So, right, well, so yeah, I mean, it was, and, and we're going to talk more about it later in the show, but it was a pretty uneventful um, trade deadline day. You know, they were, as usual, there were big names floating around in rumors, but nothing – Big really happened. Um, yeah, pretty much. Cleveland helped itself um, a little bit. Um, I think that some of the quote unquote experts might be overstating what they did a little bit, but we'll 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 get everybody on that. <laughs> Your boy. Hey, Sorry, by yeah. the way, I know y'all saw that video I posted. He thought, dude, how are you making a straw man argument for Cleveland over the Warriors, dude? They were healthy. They still got smoked. But, well, he actually he you know, skipped he he skipped the Warriors, he skipped the Spurs, you know he skipped like <laughs> OKC the Clippers, and and that's another topic that that we're going to talk about later in the show, like who out there could possibly derail the Warriors. So we're going to see yeah. where Cleveland ranks, you know, when we talk about that later. But yeah, I'll say this real quick for y'all go. Okay. When people talk about how the NBA interests and everything, you know what the biggest problem the NBA is that nobody, not too many people talk about? It's that it is too daggum hard to make a trade in the NBA because you got to match all these salaries. Baseball, yeah, you can dump yeah. the guy if you want to. Football, you dump the guy. They make it too hard. And so what happens is if you sign a guy and he may not work out, it's hard to get rid of that person. So now you're stuck. And I think that hurts the game. Yeah, I mean, but that all comes with, um, you know, their their salary structure. It's either, you know, be able to do what you're saying or you have these guaranteed salaries. And I, I'm pretty sure that the players, associate, the players union is not going to, you know, allow them <laughs> to do anything with those guaranteed salaries. So, <laughs> yeah, got to, but it's hey, gonna, it's gonna I, be I what it, it is. But Tobias, hey, man, as easy. usual. Thanks for your call, man. We appreciate it, and we'll definitely holler at you next week, man. Hey, it, if you guys take it easy, well, I will never get drunk and fall asleep on the couch at Peyton Manning's house. So I want to have to <laughs> you guys take it easy. <laughs> he might put his things in your face. All right, man. Peace. <laughs> yeah, that, that Peyton Manning thing is crazy, man. 
Um, I mean, it's actually not a story that people hadn't heard before back then, but, you know, with his image throughout all the years that he played in the NFL, um, it, it, it basically went away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peyton a wild boy, man. He a wild dude. Let me um, lay it on your forehead. My head is on your mind. <laughs> All right, so look, man, Hot Topics are brought to you guys by Audible. Is your schedule too hectic to read as much as you want? Well, try audiobooks, kick back, and let someone else do the reading for you. All you got to do is visit Audible and sign up for your free trial, audibletrial.com slash sports. In no time, you can be listening to the latest bestsellers, hands-free, stress-free, while getting other things done at the very same time. <laughs> Maybe like your boy Peyton. He was hands-free, stress-free, and, you know. Decided to get some things done at the same time. Um, <laughs> look, man, AB, let's talk. Let's, let's go to some some NFL talk real quick. Absolutely. Um, and and this is something uh, Jimmy had to step away for a minute, but I know he'd be interested in in this topic. There, I, I'm not even gonna call them rumors, but there have been some people speculating a little bit about the the Super Bowl champs, the Broncos. And and basically staying in the midst of this speculation, um, because Osweiler's contract talks are kind of on hold, people are saying, could the Denver Broncos swoop in and grab an RG3, maybe even a Colin Kaepernick? Like, do you see that making any sense for the uh, for the Super Bowl chance? Um, on face face value, it doesn't because of course. You know, there are those of us, even, you know, those of us that that spend time really analyzing this game that would say, how can you compare, you know, the great Peyton Manning to a mere pleb such as uh, Norbit, a.k.a. RG, uh, RG3. But when you look at what Peyton Manning did this Super Bowl year, it's quite easy to think that you would get the same or actually a little bit better production out of one of those quote unquote running quarterbacks or athletic quarterbacks, you know, the type, the one and two read and I'm gone because I really can't read the field type dudes that you, you can still get some pretty athletic play out of. You can still, you know, score enough points with a dom and control the pace and the clock of a game. And with a dominant defense, like, um, like Denver's, what that says to me is I pay, I invest minimal dollars at the quarterback position and I invest maximum dollars on defense and I play defense. I take on a project, but I I, I count on my defense to hold teams below 20, 21 points and just count on, you know, being able to play ball control to win. So it's not as unfathomable as people would think when you make the comparison between the two, because Peyton wasn't putting up Peyton like performances this season, and they still ended up with a Super Bowl. Well, a part of the sense that they're trying to make out of it. First of all, Benjamin Albright, who's a radio personality in Denver, he reported that somebody actually texted him the other day that uh, Broncos are discussing the possibility of RG three. The sense that people are trying to make out of it as well, you know. Kubiak and Shanahan run the same offense since they basically coached together for a whole bunch of years. Kubiak right. being, you know, one of his assistants for a long time. Um, so they, they think in RG three has at least minimal knowledge of the offense. Uh, they didn't, I, I added that last little wrinkle. I say minimal because if people aren't remembering correctly, and maybe we remember a little bit, bit better because we actually are based in the Washington, D.C. area, but the Washington professional football team actually switched up. Um, Shanahan switched up a lot of what he actually did to fit RG3's, um, Mm -hmm. you know, his skill set, especially that year when they had some success in 2012. Now, he did try to run them in more of a quote-unquote big boy offense the second year, so even though he didn't run that offense too well, I guess they're still saying he has some knowledge of at least what Kubiak is trying to do. So they're making some sense of it. Um, this all stems from the fact that um, Peyton Manning, for some reason, 
it seems like we we know, it seems like Denver should know that Peyton Manning is not coming back even if he doesn't retire. Um, mm-hmm. He's probably not going back to the Broncos, but they announced that, you know, they're going to wait on Peyton Manning's decision and or retirement announcement to continue their negotiations with the would-be starter, Brock Osweiler. But mm-hmm. what they're thinking is if Peyton takes this, uh, this announcement, Pat, you know, up to the March 9th um, deadline when Osweiler can go out and start talking to other teams, then they might find themselves in a precarious situation where Osweiler is getting bids from other teams, driving up his market rate, which, you know, might take Denver to a place that they may not want to go. So that's why they're thinking if that happens, then maybe they have to grab a project like RG3 or a Colin Kaepernick or somebody like that to read that offense. I mean, to, to run that offense. So I, I think it's um definitely an interesting story that I'm going to keep an eye on because I would love to get Jimmy's opinion to, you know, to see, because we've had these same rumors in Philadelphia. Oh, RG3 to Philly and then RG3 to Dallas. Now he, his team is joining on the rumors. So I would really like to hear what he has to say. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll table that for, you know, when Jimmy's back. But um, speaking of, you know, his his former team, there was a report earlier in the week that talks mm-hmm. with Kirk Cousins had ceased in the, in the Washington organization. Um, the more I dig into it, the more I start to hear that that's not really true. They're just not mm-hmm. close on a contract. Not close like, on what do you number. make out yeah. of this whole thing? What do you even think Kirk Cousins' uh, agent has the audacity to ask for, and what do you think should probably be the number that they ultimately land on? Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, you know, <laughs> shout out to guys like Joe Flacco, uh, Cam Newton. Yes, I said Cam Newton. Um, and even to a lesser, much lesser degree, Colin Kaepernick uh, and Russell. Shout out and, and Joe Flacco. Shout out to those guys for kind of setting the market. Um, in that middle kind of non-elite bunch, um, some of those names are good. Are very, obviously, Russell Wilson is a very good quarterback. Um, Cam Newton is becoming a I good think Flacco got paid in the elite bunch, so you might want to take him out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, Flacco might have got elite, elite. And I think that that set the market. And so now um, – Cousins' agent is probably coming back to the table comparing 2015, 2016 numbers, um, in which Kirk Cousins statistically was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, um, and so <laughs> that that's what they're going off after. So they're probably asking for something like fifty or sixty million, um, maybe even seventy, with forty to fifty million in guaranteed money. Um, over over a five year, probably over four four or five years. Um, w- would you say that's that's accurate? They're trying to probably land him somewhere in the fifteen to sixteen million per category. And, yeah, and, I mean they they, up, they you know. and the key word you use there is land, which means they're probably yeah. asking for somewhere in the twenty million dollar range, and, right? And see where the chips end up falling. Um. You know, talking to some other people about the situation, they're not too worried about, you know, this situation not getting done because at this point, you know, with the success they've had and and the the way this team year after year has been looking for a quarterback, you know, they think Scott McLuhan is too smart to, one, let let him walk. Um, Mm -hmm. They also think that the coach, Jay Gruden, is way too enamored with Kirk Cousins to allow Mm -hmm. him to walk you know, to allow Mm. his management to allow him to walk. Um, I'm thinking if they're far away, um, I'm not sure if this is in their thinking, but if I was them, I'd just franchise Kirk Cousins for another season. Yeah, that's what I've heard. and And a big reason for me saying that I would franchise them in that situation is because they've been burnt before. You know what I'm saying? You had RG3 in 2012 and everybody thought he was the next coming and and now look how this has ended. Uh, Kirk Cousins looked like he's a little bit more comfortable in Jay Gruden's offense. Um, he looked like he was improving on a weekly basis. 
um, up mm-hmm. in, up until the playoffs. I mean, he didn't do anything crazy in the playoffs that lost the game for him. They were just beaten by a better team. Um, mm-hmm. So I think still, and, and this is because we come from the school of, you know, non-prisoner of the moment thinking, you know, even though we think mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins seems pretty good and he's improving, I think before you back the Brinks truck up to the guy, I think you need to see at least one more season um, to make sure the improvement from last season wasn't a fluke. So if you franchise nope. him, he would probably come in somewhere around twenty $14. million dollars. You know, nope. uh huh. Yeah, make make twenty million himself. for that season. Yeah, make okay. him prove himself. I mean, you, you definitely want as I, a I don't player you want that, that long term comfortability, but I, I think I'd make him prove himself. I think you. I think you have to. I think you have to franchise him um, unless. Uh, oof, unless you really think you have the guy, um, if if it were you know obviously if it were war, war room sports uh, at the table as management, uh, which you know Daniel Snyder, we are available even though we talk pork chop greasy about you and your uh, and your organization every week. You know money talks, and we will sell out for a collective five million a year to manage your personnel and football <laughs> operations. Um, if it were us yeah, at the table. Like F the Eagles. Uh, I, I would have to franchise him. I would have to. Um, I think you 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 also you know you also get the the notion that hey, even two years, you know you don't want to turn into the Fitzpatrick effect. You know Ryan Fitzpatrick is good for anywhere between two and two and a half seasons, and then it just it all goes to hell in a handbasket. So is Kirk yeah. Cousins more of a fit, Fitzpatrick or is Kirk Cousins the real deal? You know, that becomes the question. Right. Like you, like you said, Fitzpatrick, he's the type of dude who, you know, he goes somewhere, he gets a little contract, um, and then he starts to stink it up. He goes somewhere else and resets, plays well, well enough to, you know, get into that team's good graces. You know, we've seen that with the Bills, now with the Jets. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really do think that, you know, her cousins, go ahead, screen team. Um, I think you you got it. Um, I think Kirk Cousins definitely needs to to prove himself a little bit more. Um, that's a hard sell to a player and his agent, of course. They're not trying to hear that. They're trying to get that that long term stability. And we know in the NFL, there's not a lot of long term quote unquote stability. But at least when you get that guaranteed money, even if you end up not being on the team then, you know, that puts your life in, in more of a stable position. So, um, you know, this would be another situation that we watch carefully. Um, it's just, it's still dumbfounding to me that after all that we saw from this team just less than four years ago, that we're even in this position talking about Kirk Cousins moving on as the um, <laughs> the incumbent starter with, you know, a contract in hand is is, is crazy. Um, let's go to the phone lines real quick because we got the mad scientist of sports, Nick Ficarelli, on the line. He's one of uh, the the great show. He, he runs one of the great shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Nick, what's going on, man? Nick. I can't believe that we are actually twice saying the words Kirk Cousins and fifteen to twenty million dollars in the same <laughs> hey, sentence. Hey, hey, well, Nick, Nick, explain, explain to Nick, me what real, real, Nick, real quick, this, is, this is this is B Austin. When they drafted those two guys, I went on the record. I don't know whether it was just me being hateful, spiteful, or just taking a taking a shot. I said that Kirk Cousins was their franchise quarterback. <laughs> I called it in twenty eleven. Well, you know what? It's you know it's kind of scary that I remember when they drafted RG three, the big Ballyhoo draft pick and everything. You know the big deal that they made with the St. Louis Rams to get to, to get to, to get RG three, and yet right. in the fourth round they selected Kirk Cousins and everybody's like, huh? What? What was that for? Right. And I'm sitting right. there, I'm like, well, this is what you call a hedge bet. You're hedging your bets just in case one doesn't do a good, one doesn't pan out. You may have a, you may have like, you know, a backup. And sure enough, who knew? But four plus years later, 
We're talking about Kirk Cousins possibly being franchise quarterback that RG3 was supposed to be four year, you know, after these last four years. Right. Now, look, I followed Kirk Cousins when he was at Michigan State. He was a very, very good college quarterback. In the very limited amount of time that he was backing up RG3, he wasn't showing much of anything. The light finally clicked on with Jay Gruden, and he had a really good year. Don't get me wrong. Brought his team to, to a division championship, albeit in a very, very extremely weak NFC East this year. Terrible division. And, you know, and performed admirably in the wild card loss. But when numbers are being thrown out, like four years, 80 million, five years, 90 million, possibly 100 million with, like, signing bonuses and stuff like that, I, it's like I want to talk people back off the ledge. I'm like, look, you guys were absolutely right. He may be their franchise quarterback, but he's got to prove it to me one more year, which is exactly right, what right. you guys said. Right. Now, because the franchise, because the franchise doesn't, doesn't make you elite, and that's like some big money exactly. we're talking about. But here, I think the thing is, if they franchise him, the thing that they're most worried about is that that money automatically goes on the books and it's all guaranteed. And, you know, that's a pretty nice chunk, especially when you're talking Se- about 17.5 17, 17, in uh, 2016. That'll be the cap number. That'll be the franchise exactly. tag number. 17.5. Exactly. 17.5. So you're going to have to swallow 17.5 right off the bat. Kirk Cousins, $17.5 million. Excuse me as I continuously want to, like, shoot myself in the head for being in the wrong profession. So, <laughs> so you know, as we sit here and debate this, we talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick, we talk about Joe Flacco, we talk about other quarterbacks that we can probably lump all together. If he has another good year, if he has another good year and they franchise him this year, if he has another good year, then you're going to have to pay him the money. Then you have to worry about the Ryan Fitzpatrick effect that you guys talked about, which Fitzpatrick gives you two, two plus years before it, everything goes everything goes to pot. I got to be honest with you. I like what Jay Gruden has done with Kirk Cousins. Right. I think this is a very, very good marriage. I think he will get his money, but it will be after the 2016 season. Right. I don't know why they're wasting their time and not in, 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 with with the tag. Just do it. He knows he's going to be guaranteed his money. He knows he's going to be in for another proving year. Just go ahead and do it. And if he proves himself, then pay him the money. And don't forget, there are a lot of contracts that the Redskins are going to be have coming off the books after this season is over. Whereas the cat, their cat number is going to be a lot better than it is this season. So, McLuhan knows exactly what needs to be done. I just hope Kirk Cousins doesn't think they're playing poker with him and, you know, he has to go go ahead and, and like, say, call a bluff or something like that. Hey, exactly. Um, and, and this is something that, you know, it, it bears watching. Like I said, this has been a franchise for, you know, the last decade or two have – had a very hard time trying to find that franchise quarterback. And they've been through so many signal callers in that time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting to see if this pans out. Like you said, I think, you know, Kirk Cousins and Jay Gruden, I think it's a pretty good marriage. I think they could be good together. But at the same time, just like you guys have said, before you back up that Brinks truck to his home, I think he needs to prove to you for one more season that – He's not the fluke that maybe the, their last quote unquote franchise quarterback was. So, uh, Nick, yeah. man, uh, as usual, man, we appreciate your call. Thank you so much. And everybody, make sure you check out Nick, the mad scientist, um, and his partner, Andrew, every week on the Open Sports Podcast Network. The show is called The Mad Scientist of Sports. It's a great show. OpenSports.com. All right, Nick, we appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, I don't know, man. It'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to watch it play out uh, from a mm-hmm. fan, from a fan perspective, as an NFC East fan and a, a, a staunch diehard Eagles fan who has died hard uh, and is in, every year of his life. Desensitized, is desensitized <laughs> to death 
because I die hard. Um, I am, <laughs> of course, rooting for um, Kirk Cousins to be the bust that we're talking about. I'm rooting for the downside of that. But I honestly believe there's a strong possibility that they found themselves a top, I'd say top six to 15 in the quarterback rankings, yeah. well, which is move, kind of yeah. – But moving yeah. forward maybe, you know, one did. Yeah. Since all of the, the quote unquote elite guys are either getting older in the tooth or close to retirement, Peyton's going to be gone. Brady at some mm-hmm. point will stop lighting up the world and be gone. Maybe Breeze will be gone. Uh, you'll still have Rodgers, cats like that around. But yeah, I mean, he, he, he possibly, you know, he's done some things this season and he's proven that even in clutch situations that, you know, he's about his business. So. We will see. We'll see what happens because you got to prove it again in my book in order to get that kind of money. Absolutely. So real quick, real quick, man, before we move on to b-ball and talk some, 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 you know, some NBA All Star Weekend and give our recap on that. Um, this is something that stemmed from Super Bowl Sunday. This is a story that I know you guys have heard. And, you know, we've been talking about not even on a sports tip, maybe more on a, on a social tip, but a Tennessee sheriff. Now, let me get this guy's name correct because I'm not going to let him off the hook and not say his name. Uh, his name is Robert Arnold, and he's the Rutherford County Sheriff in Tennessee. He's blaming the fact that since Super Bowl Sunday, you know, there's been seven police officers gunned down in the streets. He's blaming this violence against police officers on Beyonce's Super Bowl halftime performance and um <laughs> and and the and the video formation which features quote unquote provocative images referencing Hurricane Katrina, Katrina, the Black Lives Matter movement and you know things of that nature. On a scale of one to ten, how ludicrous do you think the thoughts of this Sheriff is. I mean, he's not the first person that we've heard say moronic things about Beyonce's performance and what the aftermath might be. But the fact that he has something tangible to point to and try to blame on her performance, like how ludicrous do you guys think this is on a scale? On a scale on a scale of one to ten, I have it as one hundred seventy-six million three hundred forty-six thousand seven hundred and sixty-two. That's how ludicrous it is. Um, and just just some some facts to spit back at him because hopefully he had, ends up listening to this podcast. As of January seventh, there were eleven unarmed African American people murdered by police in the United States of America. As of today, as of February um, two thousand and sixteen, one hundred and thirty six people have been killed by police. Now these obviously all aren't aren't murders. Some of them may have, you know, been in an exchange and, and, and the uh, policemen were doing the honorable thing in protecting society and had to make a judgment call and decision uh, to execute um, with extreme violence. Um, 28 of those were African-American. 28 of the 136 people that have been killed by police and, uh, up until February, have uh, 28 have been uh, African-American. Of those African-American, eight have been without weapons. Eight have been without weapon. Now, why is this astounding, right? So when you look at the population, African-American males are only 8% of the total U.S. population, yet we're 40% of those that get killed. No problem here? All right. Um, I'm going to take it a whole different direction. I think that he honestly believes this. Because uh, the thing is, whether it's true or not and whether he believes it are two different things. I think he honestly believes this. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you have to think, why would a video or her performance resonate with people to even make them want to do that? So what you're saying is the things that she's complaining about must have merit in order for people to want to act this way. Um but it's it's ridiculous. It's sort of like when a dude got caught. Uh, excellent, excellent point. I mean, that's what that's I do. Like, that's what I do. Love that's it. like Listen, Giuliani, like, uh, uh, Jimmy. That's like Giuliani, you know, being so quote unquote outraged about it and, and thinking that it's going to spark all kinds of violence and stuff like that. 
that's a good point that you bring up. Because like, why do you think that just a song can do that? Because because yeah. the images have some and and see where, where you guys where you guys are going with that is really the ultimate argument. And let's call it what it is. That's the ultimate argument against the resonating undercurrents of white supremacy, white entitlement, and white privilege. Because now you're going to say these images and these expressions are catalysts for people to act in this manner. Then you're saying, okay, why are they acting in this manner? Are you trying? Are you then going to say that these people are inherently violent? Are you going to say that it's just in their nature or do you have to acknowledge the conditions that have brought them to this place? Yo, what are um, you saying? Speaking of Giuliani, shout out to Giuliani who made a big deal talking about Mike Brown robbed the store. So if anything happened after that, it was his fault because um, his daughter's got wow. picked up for shoplifting the last couple of weeks. So uh, shout out to him, um, you know, for raising his daughter the right way. But the thing is, though, she didn't get shot down. Still robbed them. So, so since yeah, they she, shoplifted, she, 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 if they would have got murked, he would have been cool with it because. I mean, that's his logic. That's his logic when it when, it, you know, when it works the other way. You yeah. know what I mean? But I, I doubt I doubt he had that feelings about his own flesh and blood. But this cop, I mean, he got his fifteen minutes. He got what he wanted. But the fact of the matter is, what Beyonce did and what Kendrick Lamar did is kind of hilarious to me because I mean, it's art, and that's what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to get us talking. Um, so salute to them, both of them, for doing that. But at Man, the same time, so, so they just let the you Black know. Black Panther and, Party for self defense. <laughs> listen, um, that's a whole nother topic. But listen, the, the funny thing is, it just lets you know that anytime we sh- show some sort of pride or understanding, people can't deal with that. They can't deal with that at all. Um, right. So, what kind, you know, of, what kind of people can't deal with it? What kind of people they, can't deal with it? I mean, what are not, But it's crazy because I've heard, like, you know, this, this whole Beyonce thing has people comparing the Black Panther Party to the KKK, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, but like, like Jimmy said, like, you know, black people show a little bit of unity and everybody's up in arms. Like, but we're not out on like people's lawns burning crosses. We're not, not at dragging all. people out of their homes and hanging them from trees and stuff like that. Well, imagine, we're just having pride imagine, amongst we ourselves. Show- Why is that so scary? Here's Another. the thing, though. Here's something to think about, right? Well, first of all, first of all, it just takes a little – open a book because people have to understand that the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense and the new Black Panther Party are two different organizations Complete. with two different yep. agendas. So they try to, they try to amalgamate both of them, and, they, and they, try to, they try to act like the actions of the new Black Panther Party have something to do with the old, and they're completely different. Now, with that being said, imagine if we show some real unity what would happen. Imagine – if some of the poor Yakubians realize that they're being uh, fooled as well, and they actually, you know, show some unity with us, imagine that. Um, so this, we can take this discussion no. a lot of different ways, but to get Man. back to your original point about this uh, officer, um, I think that he may feel that way because the fact of the matter is, I, I know a, a lot of people who, you know, felt the opposite I did in terms of her performance. So instead of just trying to get into a flat out argument with them, I try to understand their points and. They feel threatened. They feel threatened. It's sort of like my same theory with Cam Newton in the, in the quarterback position. They just feel threatened. They're so used to being, you know, the be-all, end-all. They, well, they're so, used to enjoying that privilege and that entitlement. Well, they're used to enjoying the privilege without someone calling it out and pointing it out to them. Uh, That's the thing. Now you yeah. have people um, who are, you know, some of our most popular artists who are speaking on these issues. And this, I think this goes back to what um, people would say about Beyonce and Jay Years ago, people were telling them, like, yo, you're in a position that if you said something, you know, you can move the needle. Things will happen. And, yeah. you know, it, it, Jim, you know the, uh, the by their logic, that that's advice. quite obvious because it looked like the beehive is out there murdering police officers now. So, <laughs> by their logic, beehive. by their logic, the, mur- the, the, the beehive out so, there putting so the murder. When the, when the, when the elder was talking to J&B about this years ago, it proved that he was right all along. You have the influence to make these conversations happen. Now, I, you know, we, we, we can joke about whether they're out there doing it or not, but the fact of the matter is there's been more, like, you know, conversations and more people. I've seen so many young people actually look up the Black Panther Party after that great documentary yeah, as well, that, that, as, well as what true. Beyonce did. As that's so true. all that does, it, it proves Belafonte's point. The God Belafonte told them years ago, like, you guys yo. are in a position now where you don't need the money. Yeah. So, yo, and I think, and I think they heard him then. 
B. I, I think yeah. they heard them then. It was just, you know, we're there, you know, they, we're living in that generation where, you know, I'm rich, so I'm cocky. I, eh, we might do something in the future, but we're not going to do it because you told us to. We're not going to do it on our time. That, that, we're going to do it on called, our time. called ego. Now it's called time. ego. But you know what, ego, though? Ego think, and pride think, and pushing back on your on your elders. But they, but, yeah, but they, they heard, that, heard that's it. Part of it. They that's heat. part of it. But honestly, in my opinion, if you look at the timing, I think having their daughter did something to them because – they yeah, seem to that's be a good more. Point. They see the they world. They seem to be more into they it. Since, see, I mean, they see and, the and, world. I mean, you guys have kids. They see, so the, world they see the world. She, they see the world she's growing up in, and those b- millions of dollars aren't going to change the way her nose is, her kinky hair, and her complexion. So they know that what what she's facing. Okay. So that is definitely that's definitely changed because change kids Michaels. kids will will definitely change your perspective and the way that you view the world. I know it's done that for for those of us in the war room. Who have them and, and the nephews that you that you have, Jimmy, it, it does something to you. I want to say salute to uh, Beyonce. We might get shut down because I'm going to keep it a billion. I hate her music. I hate the Beehive. Uh, uh, Beehive but I next. respect, I respect <laughs> what you <she> did because <laughs> she took a shot. She took a chance and she put a she took a risk. She put something on the line. Never mind the lyrics of the song is whack. Never mind that she's not necessarily known as the most conscious of artists. She did take a stand and a risk because there's a chance that these white people won't give her any more endorsement money. She took a risk, and I respect when people. It wasn't like you know what's crazy. Team, it well, wasn't like taking a team you, self. You have a really in. You really don't need that what, money no more. It, 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 it wasn't like taking crazy. that team picture with the hoodie on. And just Yo, saying, oh, you know. had it had it turned into a LeBron shop. Here's the thing, though. I'm not going to say I have this thing for like B. Austin because I, I like some of her music. I don't know if I like it or that is forced down my throat so much through through uh, media that you start <laughs> liking songs which you really didn't like when you first heard them. But um, that's on track. I, I, I think it's interesting because again, it goes to show her power. I mean, Erica Badu makes songs and makes these statements damn near on a weekly basis. But the fact that she's Erica Badu, it really doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It doesn't mean anything, but you know, not, I shouldn't say nobody listening, anything, Jim. It, it does mean Shoot. something to those who, who care for her art. I mean, you know, I should. In the say last that, two but, years, people people just noticing that Erica Badu got a fatty. They just noticing that like two man, years, and we man, we know that. Man, we can do a whole <laughs> show on that, beloved. Like yo, and nobody listening. I'm telling yo, you, man. Listen, we already yo. know what kind of power her coochie. Now, my, listen. All I'm my saying last, is this. my last point though really would be black. Black being pro black does not mean anti white. It does not mean hate. But see, the problem is when you flip it, that rhetoric coming from the other direction, history and fact will state that everyone we've heard that's pro white ends up being anti something else and hateful towards something else. We can't say that with being pro black. Hey, that's just you know not that, the case. You know, you know the irony in and even you and a lot of people in the black community even having to say what you just said. You know where the irony lies, because irony, when we're talking about you know black people being murdered by the police and all that, you always have people from the other side saying stuff all like, lives, "Well, they're you know they kill each other every day, so when they start respecting each other, then maybe you know blah blah blah." See, you can say that when when. When when that's the narrative, but then when it flips and we are trying to unite, then it's scary that we're uniting and they're you know they don't want us to do that. But I thought five minutes ago you wanted us to unite and stop killing each other, so maybe we get respect from outside of our community. Make up your mind. Yo, but to me, to me, that argument never works. I I hate that argument because um, we do have a problem, but at the same time, there's so many different ways to look at this. Talk about that. There's, some, there's so many ways to look at this, man. Like black on black crime technically is 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 doesn't exist to be honest with you because if that's the case, we have white on white crime. People commit crimes amongst those they're close to, and whether people want to admit it or not, this world is still segregated because white people commit more crimes against white people, Asians, and I, you can go so on and so forth. Gen- but generally even, speaking, we don't go to church together, we don't party together, we don't yeah, but even, we, we don't come but together even, in prison. Those but three even places. beyond that. Even if we even if we say yes, that is a problem. What does that have to do with the other problem? That's like if you have a man who um who 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 basically like you know rapes and beats his wife. You say um he's wrong for raping his wife. 
Well, yeah, he beats her too. Like just because you have multiple things that are wrong doesn't mean. Yeah, I mean you can't say one thing that isn't wrong because something else is wrong. You dig what I'm saying? Because this yeah. happens, this shouldn't be a problem. Like what kind of sense does that make? Right. Like because yeah, I mean people can other, never you should be able to kill y'all. Yeah. <laughs> That's and basically I... what they're saying. Y'all not, and I'm not even saying people too. can't compartmentalize things. I think people refuse to compartmentalize things when it doesn't fit their agenda. Anything can be compartmentalized when when it's in your favor and what you're trying to say. All right, but I don't know. We could we could go another two hours on that, man. Man, this is a five hour quick. show. <laughs> yeah, we're about to talk a little bit of uh, b ball, but before we even go into b ball and the stat of the week, man, I just wanted to know if you fellas heard, you know, Chris Bosch his latest battle with blood clots. You know, he pulled out of the all-star game because of a calf strain, but there's rumors surfacing that calf strain is really a blood clot in his calf. And you know, he missed like the last 30 something games last season because he had blood clots, you know, traveling to his lungs. Um, They, they thought that it wouldn't be a problem moving further, but if this is true, man, like this is like a shame for this man's career. Y'all have me rooting for Chris Bosh. Well, I've always rooted for Chris Bosh. I just had a laugh yeah, at I him. Mean, you know, I, I just laughed at his expense, but you know, I've always rooted for <laughs> No, at the same time, like listen, we joke about Chris Bosh a lot. Um, you know, all the famous in the words of Loda Luxman, <laughs> you're gonna get this work, like in terms of these jokes. But at oh, the yeah. same time, yeah. you don't wanna see this to happen you don't wanna see this happen to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is a sad story. I hope I hope that he can recover from this. Um, but of course they overanalyze everything on um, NBA TV because it's, you know that's what they do. They got to fill the time slots, and they were bringing in specialists and stuff that like had me shook for him. Like oh my god, like this is life threatening. So yeah. well, the first um, one definitely was because they were in his lungs. I mean, blood clots are life threatening anyway. So yeah, I'm a little yeah, nervous. So the thing is, even though even though you're gonna get these jokes, nobody can't, wants can't, to see this happen. Can't anybody, go to your man, lungs. So. Can't go to your heart. Can't go to your brain. Those three yeah, so, blood clots get to them three places. It's, it's a wrap for you. Yes, I want to wish him a speedy recovery, man. And outside of basketball, just get healthy in general because uh, Yo, that's not Chris, a nice way to go up. Chris Bosh, you got to come back for three reasons. Number one, you're a great player, and I think you could cap this career off with a with a gold jacket, as if they wear gold jackets in the NBA Hall of Fame. Uh, but you could cap this <laughs> career off with a gold jacket. We can't clown you the way that we want to clown you if you're facing a life and death situation. So you got to get healthy so we can get these memes off, man. Salute to you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah no that. doubt, man. Salute to Chris Bosh, man. Definitely one of uh, the more underrated players. We never – thing about it is we always gave him his props in terms of basketball, but you still got to get some jokes. Yeah, you got to get well, – Well, yeah, the boy was Bukaki and in the locker room. They're getting <laughs> Bukaki on, right? So, yeah, he – um. There's no timetable for his return. He didn't practice. He's not going with the team to Atlanta for Friday's game. Um. So it's like he, he's going to be on blood thinners. So it could be a situation where he's done again for the season because of this damn blood clot situation. But um, stat of the week before we get into some some NBA talk, and this is NBA related. Twenty two years ago this week, we witnessed the last quadruple double that the NBA has seen, and it was notched by David Robinson, who had thirty four points. 10 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 blocks in a single game. Shout out to the Admiral. I think another player, um, Jimmy just talked about underrated. I think the Admiral might be a little underrated in the in the larger scheme of things. I think his haircut did a lot his for people haircut, we, not putting him where he needs to be in the history of the game. But David Robinson was a baller, man. Quadruple double, and we haven't seen one since. 22 years and we haven't seen a quadruple double. I think we probably have, but since they're not counting turnovers, you know, it takes a lot of guys out of the running. <laughs> so what, what, what are you guys' thoughts on that real quick before we move, move on? He's, he's underrated. He's underrated. Um, I think that his heart pumped Kool-Aid and that if he had the dog in him, we would certainly um, Damn. look at him as more of a of an all-time great center as opposed to just a highly skilled super athlete that got disrespected by Shaq and uh, the Honorable Hakeem. 
Unless you want. Came at his oh. neck, yeah. Well, he came at his heart. Yeah, like damn, that's kind of that's kind of vicious. I think that y'all only, know his heart. With, y'all know out, his heart. Shout out to the homie Savad. He's a Spurs fan. Um, I, I think that he is one of the all-time greats. Mm. So I didn't. I don't look at him the same way that uh that that you do. Obviously, be Austin. I mean, he did come around at a time where you know there was some other great guys at the position. Hakeem, Pat Ewing, Shaq came in. He's a little bit younger. Um, but I wouldn't say that his heart pump Kool Aid. I mean, because a couple of those years, he was the best out of those. Like there were years, obviously Elijah Yo. wanted Elijah wanted, but there Yo, were years. A couple of those years, the- Dwight Howard was the best out of what? What? That ain't, that ain't I mean, hard to probably, do. No, Dwight Howard had one year where he probably was the best, but I wouldn't say it's hard. And, and didn't Kool-Aid. have anybody to play against. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't say it's hard. Pump Kool Aid. I mean, he got the better of Elijah Wan several times. So don't get it twisted like he was a slouch. I mean. I didn't know yeah. you were going to go there with it. I, I've never heard the admiral disrespected the way you just did that, man. Uh, I think he, I think he, I think he was, I think he was top. You know, he was top five in his era. I definitely think he deserves to be in the hall. But I've just seen and witnessed in his playing career where I think there could have been, there could have been more. Like when you compare him to Shaq, Shaq, there could have been more. But with Shaq, it wasn't a matter of fear. He was just lazy. With the admiral, I think he was. He may have been afraid of some some folks. He, you I don't know, know about as that, far man. As, like, as just, far as you and, and, and the honorable, all I remember with the honorable is him treating David Robinson like Peyton Manning treats um, people in yeah, the exercise but, room. But that's because that's all they show. <laughs> yeah. they, they, that's that's all they show is that one series where he was just putting the, the work on him. I mean that one that one year that one year Elijah Wan went in on everybody like that was just his year but over their career it definitely wasn't like that. We'll get some head to head numbers in here. I'll, I'll bring them back to the table um, as we move on. But your comment about the White Howard man? They ain't hard to be in here, but still, <laughs> it wasn't hard for him to be the best. It was like the White and 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 what's your man name who went crazy after he came to Philly. Uh, with no knees from the Lakers. Um, that dude. Bynum. Andrew Bynum. It was like the white and Andrew Bynum. So it ain't really hard to be. Now that you got a couple of uh talented bigs in the league, you see how the white Howard has fallen off the earth. Matter of fact, his name surfaced surfaced in a lot of trade rumors this week. They were trying to get him out of Houston. Um they almost had him traded. Um I forgot exactly where, but it was a no, it was Milwaukee. They almost had Dwight Howard traded to Milwaukee, but he wouldn't opt in um, for the final year of, of that deal. So Milwaukee called the talks off. But let's let's get into that. Real quick, uh, real quick, uh-huh. real quick, real quick. I just want to say something. I got some head-to-head stats here. And uh, first of all, David Robinson is 30-12 and 12 versus Hakeem Olajuwon. Um, yeah. He averaged 20 and 11, and Hakeem averaged 21 and 11. Uh they both averaged 20, oh, 20 and 11, 21, 11, and 3. That's the both of them. Um, David Robinson shot a higher field goal percentage um, in one more game. Like, so the whole thing how, of how, how, uh What's the age difference between those two? Uh, I could tell you that in one second. But the fact of the matter is, man, um, let me see. Uh, David Robinson was born in 65. And let me see when Hakeem was born. 63. Oh, two years. Yeah, so I mean, David Robinson, like statistically, they're they're even, other than the fact that David Robinson won more games. Um, mm-hmm. But that one season, yeah, you can't. Yeah, Elijah Wan was just going like I don't know what he was possessed. <laughs> Elijah Wan was just Peyton Manning, like you said. Every center that came his way, he was just putting it on their forehead. That's just weird. <laughs> yeah, like you know, outside of Peyton in the playoffs. So anyway, um, <laughs> bottom line is, man. So I, I just, I, I'm just actually shocked. Be off, and I never heard anyone disrespect the admiral. Shout to uh, Savad because not only is he listening in, but he sent me a text and say, "Yo, I've heard his haircut disrespected like that." Now, <laughs> we will, hair, and we will continue haircut. to disrespect his haircut. If you want to talk about his sartorial game or his uh, his uh, lack of a line, um, we can talk about that. His haircut was atrocious, but the admiral, as uh, the, as my man calls him, like, I, I can't believe disrespecting him like that. Yeah. Uh, I have a look, man. Y'all can check out our website at warroomsports.com to call in and speak with us about any of today's topics. Dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline at 323 410 Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, 
Just press one if you want to talk. Matter of fact, scratch that. Not about any of today's topics. About NBA related topics, trade deadline, NBA All Star Weekend, Dave, David Robinson's hairline. Um, any of that is definitely fair game. Slavery, right now. Slavery Johnson passing him the uh, ball. So let's let's <laughs> let's wrap about some NBA. Absolutely, and the NBA wrap is brought to you by Sports the Book. Tired of reading the same old sports books with titles, sports lists, rankings, and imaginary starting lineups? Well, be sure to pick up your copy of Sports. Smart people only read the sports. This is the Illmatic of sports book, and it's a mixture of sports and hip-hop culture that will keep you mesmerized from beginning to end. Just go on sportsthebook.com or go to warroomsports.com and get your copy. Don't miss the movement. Shout out to Hip Hop 365, who said it's the, the best book of the year, and I couldn't agree more. The author is amazing. So uh, Shout out to the hippies. the book.com. And yo, B. Austin, don't think I, I, I ain't realize you ain't give me that bread either. That's all I'm saying. But we'll talk about that <laughs> off here. Um, <laughs> now, we're going to start off, right? We're just going to start off with a dunk contest from All-Star Weekend. I know both of my brothers are going to disagree with me because we actually watched it together. We were... Uh, on our War Room Sports Retreat, watching the actual dunk contest. I think my main man, Gordon, got robbed. Although, I thought Levine had some amazing dunks. My man sat down. And if you can sit down, that's just pretty much it to me. Um, but I thought that it was one of the best dunk contests that I've seen in years. Um, yeah. There are a couple that come to mind. Obviously, the Vince performance. Uh, the one year Jason Richardson had it, um, that was a tough dunk contest as well. Um, yeah. You want to go historical, you can talk about Dominique and Mike. But the thing about those dunk contests, as time goes on, and these young boys out here flipping and flying, it starts to make them look weak. But I do remember the energy at the time. So, you know, it's all about energy and in the moment. And yeah. and for, for me, I think these two young cats um, definitely breathe some life back into the contest um, because it wasn't just one person with – with a crazy performance, you know, it was actually two. I wish, you know, we can get a, 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 a contest where we have all four or however many they're choosing for that particular year where, where everybody's good. Like people like Andre Drummond didn't even belong in the dunk contest in the first place. And I'm not saying this is hindsight. Like I, I really don't like to see big men in the dunk contest like that. Um, and I'm not just talking about height. Like, he's, Sean a big man. he's a back to the basket type guy. You know, I don't really like to see, see, but but I don't like Sean Kemp to me. It's it's kind of different, you know. Even though he he's a flash, he wasn't a back to back. Yeah, he's guy. a different type of dude. Like you talk about the Gordon, traditional, the traditional Daniel, just back as tall to the as Andre Drummond, but yeah. he's not the same type of player. And those guys are a little more athletic than the Andre Drummonds of the world. Um, so I, I just hope one day that they can get a field of a bunch of great dunkers you know, and, and, and try to even breathe more life into the competition. Because we talk about Vince Carter's um, performance, but but there were some great dunkers and some great dunks in that contest. Besides his, he just did so much that you just forget to talk about those guys. Oh, no, T-Mac, 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 was, going in, T-Mac was going uh, in, too. Yeah, T-Mac put on a great performance. Even Stackhouse had some Uri. good dunks in that, in that particular dunk contest. But, yo, the other night, like, I don't agree with Jimmy necessarily that Gordon was robbed. I do, however, think Gordon had the best dunk of the night. But I, 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 I'm not, you know, I can't put one dunk out there and say the contest is over because it's just a, it's the scoring structure to me. Like, he couldn't get extra credit for that dunk. If you could get more than a 50, Yo, I would have given him more than a 50. Because what what Zach Levine followed it up with, in my opinion, was also a fifty, but it still wasn't as good as Gordon's dunk. So if you see, see what I mean, me, if me, you could get some extra credit off of that dunk yo, and get like a fifty six, Zach Levine had like four fifties. Zach Levine had two hundred. <laughs> yo, yeah, but here's I, my thing, Dev. To me, to me, it has to be relative. If I'm a judge and I know I just gave that a fifty. That can't be a 50 because it has to be relative. It has to be like if that's better than that, they can't have the same score. So yeah, you have makes, to know going that up. makes sense, Jim. But before that dunk, they were giving out 50. So the bar was already set, I guess, 
the bar was already set at a damn near human level, and then Aaron Gordon took it to alien level, and they don't have scores for alien dunks. Yo, so I that's just where, honestly think yo, <laughs> that's where probably. And I know I, I know I, I'm I in the minority. Think, I do, I do, I do not think Gordon Scott had Scott the best. said Gordon got robbed in the chat room. Yeah. He said Gordon got robbed. I, I think he had the best dunk. I think he had a taste for the contest. Y'all, not y'all, because I won't include Dez. Jimmy, I think you, I, yo, you act like you see cats go from the damn near the free throw line and windmill or go from the line. I've never seen that. And even, yeah, even before did. the sit down, he, before the sit down, that Johnny did with the uh, the mascot when he was on the mascot. Um, yeah, that was hot. That was hot. Yo, and he took it out the air and switched hands like yo. The boy did a similar you know, dunk now, right That after was something. That. that was something they both were doing. Like they would catch the ball or take it off of somebody else in the air without touching it with the other hand. Like they were just jumping up and scooping it. I'm like, yo, what are these dudes doing? But see, here, but, here's my thing, though. I honestly feel like watching that, like like it was Zach Levine's to lose. Obviously, he is the champ. But there was an energy in the room when he first started that it, I, I felt like when they started, like, yo, nobody's going to beat him. Yo, um, but he delivered. And, and, huh? That's he what I'm delivered. saying. Like you kind of say that, like he, you know, like no, no, I'm not saying that he stunk it up. Like I just he think didn't that go out there and do I thought dude was at a different. Like you said, if you want to use your analogy, dude was at an alien level, and he was at a human level. Like, yo, well, I say I'm did, only saying I'm saying for one dunk, for one dunk. And, and I feel I, I feel bad for dude because it's like, yo, it's, how, what, what you gonna come back and do? What you gonna do? Yo, now? let me ask you this, Jimmy. How I'm many, still thinking how many, like Zach Levine was kind of alien level too, man. He went from the foul line three times. Once was off of alley oop. Once was a East Bay funk from the damn foul line, and it another was one was a was a windmill. So I, you know, that was alien level stuff too. If I'm gonna be yo, fair to both of these cats, yo, yo, dude, he, dude sat on the couch. couch. Dude he jumped in the air and sat on the couch. That was crazy. Yo, you I can't mean, you do saw that. Me, That's like, not possible, but he did it. My man <laughs> sat down, beloved. Like, yo, yo, I'm gonna go. He I'm gonna go down. the other way. I'm gonna say J- Gordon's one dunk has Jimmy disrespecting Zach Levine. Yeah. Yo, and I don't think Zach. I don't think Zach like can't do that. I think, you know, maybe no, dunk contest just turn that. into a horse. I'm saying he maybe didn't that, do it. Maybe that would be cool. A and horse be also, it's not that one dunk. The dunk before that, when he took the ball out of the mascot's hands, he was spinning. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But and Levine he, did something like that. Levine did yeah, something. Yeah, but he did, it, he did it without taking out of, like, the, the mascot's hand. He, he did a, like, no, a, a lower He did it off the bounce. He did it off the bounce. And got a 50. No, he did man, it off the bounce, though, Jim. That actually might have been more difficult because the ball no, wasn't just chilling. No, not to me. Chilling. Not to me, yo. Jim, not the to ball me. wasn't to me, just I feel, chilling, like, I feel like dude got The ball, the ball like wasn't state. He had to bounce it and catch it in the right place. They did the no, same I dunk. Feel, he just used the no, mascot to do it. No, it's not the same. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, also, you can say no, but let me see you throw something and go catch it rather than me hold it right there for you. I mean, I can't do none of that shit. No, no, no. We're not talking about the catch. Just, 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 you know, just. No, all right. I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is that I think the ball got robbed, and I think timing has to has to play a part too. Like, okay, you did something similar, but I just did that. It's sort of like when when Jordan won that contest and he jumped from inside the foul line, sort of like Zach Levine did. Even though B. Austin says that it's no difference between being inside the foul line and outside the foul line. So what's the point of having a foul line? I ask. But um, when Jordan did that, if he didn't go last, I feel like he would have lost that contest. The timing oh, also plays a part. You can't disrespect that because your hero couldn't go from the dotted. What's that guy doing anything? I don't know. <laughs> no, but for me, like you're saying, he just did that, but I kind of think that kind of one-upped him, personally. I, don't. I, I mean, I think I don't. it looked hot. Cause, you know, he had the dude out there on the little stickless segue. I refuse to call that a hoverboard. And, you know, it was, you know, he was spinning around or whatever. But it was, you know, it was still kind, kind of a stationary target. Like, dude went out threw it up on the bounce and did the exact same thing while catching the ball in the air. So, you know, you know, tomato, no, I think tomato, was however I think you look at it. Was better. Um, was better. I, I think remember, it was better. I, I, I honestly feel like he got right. It was a great contest. And I'm not taking nothing away from Zach Levine to say that he didn't deliver. He delivered. But all I'm saying is I felt <laughs> like dude had a better dunk contest. I feel like he should have won. And I feel like at this point, I don't know, you know, is Zach Levine's to lose because the hype around this kid in terms of his, in terms of a dunk contest because he can't play basketball. I don't um, think that's the case anymore. So crazy. I think Gordon's performance was so good. I think they will they're going to have both of those dudes back in the contest, and I don't think I don't think it's going to be Zach's contest. To I don't lose. know I mean, if they Gordon showed, can match that. They showed Gordon's dunk is, just as much as they showed any dunk from the winner because 
it no, was I agree. And I they, they, I mean, they, they, went, they went out to commercial when it went when the dunk contest was over. They went out to commercial to the losers' dunk. So and that, and that's I mean, why that's I'm same. telling you, I don't think it's gonna be. But but that here's, my, here's my thing. Here's my again. thing. I think it's I definitely think, easy for I don't year. think Duke can reach that level again. I don't know if he can. I just don't know if he can. I don't know. So what you saying he don't have that level that Zach got? Huh? You saying he don't got that level that Zach got? I don't think so. I'm saying Zach's a better dunker, but I think that night okay. that was his contest. It's okay. sort of like, you know how they say, well, if we play nine times out of ten, I think that was the tenth time right there, and they just didn't get it right. That's just my opinion. He may prove me wrong, and I hope he does, but I don't know what else you can do. Like, what you, I don't know. I think like, Bo got I, ignorant I, I, bounce. And when you got I, ignorant I, bounce, you can think of some creative stuff. That, oh, that no. is funny because I actually agree he with Jimmy. Down, I think maybe Gordon, he might lay down next year. You know what I mean? I think Gordon. I think Gordon has yeah, ignorant man. bounce because that that um that between the legs joint where he put it behind his neck and then brought it down and then brought it back up. That and was they crazy too. It. Yeah, that you was crazy. You know why? Because that just like Kenny crazy. said, and I watched I've watched the contest like four times already. Just like Kenny said, Kenny noticed it from the from the from the get go. And he told those dudes at the table, like, he just did something that y'all didn't notice. Wait for the replay. Y'all don't know what he just did because a lot of people thought he just went up, put it between his legs, and bang. They didn't realize he went up, cocked it to his to, to the name on his jersey, brought it back down under his legs, and then, and then banged it because in fast motion, that's not really giving you – it's not giving you what his – prior dunks or Zach prior dunks. It's not giving you that aesthetically. That's something that you got to kind of see the slow motion. Just like Mike's dunk. Did you know what they call the looking into the rim? Fast motion, that dunk was not that great. But the fact that, that after years and years of showing it, they slow it down so much and it looked like he's flying and his legs are kicking, it did not look like that in fast motion. <laughs> yeah. It really didn't. It looked yeah. like, yo, you did that. I, 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 I kind of agree. With Jimmy, though, because I've seen Zach play in, like, pro-am leagues, and it's like he don't really got legs. He got something else. He got two something else's on his low. Like, the the height that he gets on his leaps is, like, he don't he don't even – you you looking at him as a as an old head, and you like, yo, why are you not Yeah, but B, you don't got both sat out. down on the couch in midair. So, whatever Zach got, got the legs, got, got the same got thing. Got he got funny. I don't know if Gordon, I don't know if Gordon can go from the free throw. I don't know. Zach can fly. See, but that's different. That's the difference of being a two leg jumper versus a one leg jumper. And a one jumper. versus a one leg jumper. Yeah, right. That's not that's not that's not an indictment on your bounce. Like, dude obviously has probably the same type of vertical as as Zach Levine. But going through from the foul line is a total different thing. That's that's you know, that's that's your one leg takeoff. So maybe he don't got that one pogo. <laughs> like the ball got, but yeah, I, I think I do think in the conversations that I've heard you two have since that night, I think his foul lineness or his one step in, I think that was being discounted just a tad because you just don't do stuff. The only person I've ever seen do a is, windmill is the ball. from the foul yeah. line is do James White, and by the time he got into the NBA and got into the dunk contest, he couldn't even do it anymore. So, yeah, yeah. and and the East Bay from from the yeah, he did some crazy stuff, man. So I wasn't really mad that they were giving out fifties. I just thought they were gonna go participation trophy on everybody and give it a tie. That's what I thought. They man, did. they they fifty fifty fifty. Everything can't be a fifty, man. Like anyway, man. Bottom line is we'll never agree on this. Bull got robbed. I think everything um, those dudes was doing was a fifty. <laughs> no, man, it's levels because those even even even. Like Levine's dunk, some were better than others. Like, so you have to. Uh, first of all, first of all, why is Magic? I mean, be also mentioned that Magic couldn't even dunk. Like, you know, yeah. he did dunk twice, um, once in the finals though. But why is Magic judging the dunk contest? <laughs> why is George Gervin judging the dunk contest? I mean, Yo, the NBA is George a family, Gervin right? Would why, is Shaq, the, why is Shaq? Why is judging Shaq the judging the dunk contest? Other than the fact that he works for TNT. My thing is this. Um, you, the NBA is supposed to be like a fraternity of family or not. Why not bring get back my man. they have done it? Bring back ex champions to judge the contest. Yeah, they need to get my man Kenny Skywalker out there. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, somebody find out where D Brown is. What rehab is he in? Bring him back. Let him sit out there. Man. Like, come on, man. So many things. What's Fred Webb doing right now, man? Like, you know Muffin. what I'm saying? Like, dig these dudes up. Let them get to participate in the weekend. Man. Said, a here's thing. a barometer. He said, which dunker is on every timeline? 
I, 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 I'm assuming he's saying that um, uh, Gordon's dunk is on every timeline, but at the same time, that's, it, it's a dunk contest. It's, if it was about one dunk, you can make one dunk and walk off, then okay. If you're gonna if you're gonna tell me the rules are, whoever has the best dunk of the night wins, kind of like that BS they did with John Wall the year before. Then you yeah, got man. it. You're the Yo, I, I think I think that Jordan dunk was wins. so special. I think that dunk was so special. They should have ended it like and one. They should have took the ball, threw it in the stand. Threw it in the stand. Everybody should have came <laughs> on the just floor. Rolled out. Yeah, <laughs> they should have end one the whole John right Let there. The crowd rolling on the floor. Ah! <laughs> they should have end one it, man. But you know that was yeah. that was a hot one of the highlights of the weekend. But what were your uh, overall thoughts and maybe some other highlights that you that you have from the weekend outside Yo, of the, uh, the, said, the weekend long Blumpkin Kobe got? As I said, <laughs> Clay Clay was going to win the three point shootout. I was surprised that uh, JJ Redneck didn't do a little better. Uh, some of the dudes in that contest didn't belong, and they knew they didn't belong. Why Why was Chris Middleton in the contest? Because I was the baby face. The they go on percentage. Face. They don't. They don't go on your shooting prowess for your whole career. They go on your percentage for that year. Like Michael Jordan shot a great percentage and got in the contest one year. Allen Iverson shot the best percentage of his career and got into the contest. We know those dudes aren't three point shooters. But I, I think the overall weekend was done pretty well in Toronto. Like Jimmy said, there was a, a there was definitely a um, overexposure. <laughs> if you will, of Kobe Bryant. There was definitely too many Drake sightings. But, you know, Yo. that's that's what they got right now. They got Drake. Um, but I, but I, still, I still maintain that I like the fact that they did something classy for one of their legends that are going out because it's an all-star game. I have no problem with them honoring somebody on their last go-around when they know it's their last go-around. But I, but I think the three-point contest was really good. I like the fact that the skills contest included big men and big men actually, you know, a big man actually won it. So I, I dug that. I didn't really dig the new format of that contest. It seemed like they made it easier because they put big men in it, but hey. <laughs> but it seemed I, like, oh, it seemed it like my job. man Moubier yeah. didn't really have it on. Yeah, the, the, the game scoring almost 200 points. Yeah, that, that was, was a little bit drawn. But don't think I didn't notice that my man PG-13 put a 41 piece up on them cats. <laughs> Yo, man, all, all I want to say is this I, I told you guys I told you guys this weekend I have a theory that I, I you know it's amazing Kobe is is an all time legend. That's 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 not even arguable. But my problem is when this starts, I don't know where it stops. Like I know next year we'll probably be like giving K G a, a weekend hand job. But then <laughs> I see it going past that and you wanna have average players because you know it's cop. It's a copycat. Yo, league, Jimmy, copycat yo, world. Jimmy is. I don't so know because I don't think Barnes average players. I don't think average players announce their retirement. Kobe they didn't even want to announce his retirement. His people start, made him do it because they said you deserve a Blumpkin. He ain't really want it. They're gonna start though. We're gonna have. We're gonna watch two years from now. We're gonna be celebrating the career of Paul Gasol. Watch. <laughs> and Paul's a Hall of Famer. No shot. He I'm is, but watch. Hall of Famer. Watch. I mean, I'm not saying that. Celebrating other people. I, I'm just afraid of that. I hope it doesn't happen, but I know the world we live in, and we like to tear people down, but we also like to give Blumkin. So, I know, think I, I, think it, I right still here. think it's going to be reserved for special cats. You know, yeah, you might get that for Duncan. Do. You might you, shoot. I'm, I question whether or not they're going to do it for KG. They see the league seem like they forgot what KG used to be all about too. But a Duncan, he's still having success. So. You know, he's more visible. I know they're going to try to force him to let everybody know when he's going to hang it up, um, even though Duncan probably is not the type to, to want to make a big yo, deal either. But yo, I don't, I don't, he's, he's not ago. even coming. Yo, he's not even coming to All-Star Weekend. Yo, Tim Duncan retired three years ago. Like, what are you talking about? Yo, he's just yeah, a I, 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 don't, I don't think they're going – I don't think they're going, you know, celebrate Matt Barnes. He ain't going to have a go-on-away tour. He ain't going to get an angry dragon? <laughs> yo, Tim Duncan – about Tim a dirty Duncan, Sanchez? Tim Duncan is literally a part-time worker at this point. Like my man, it, it works part. He can't even get health insurance no more. The Spurs don't even cover his medical insurance because he's part-time. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna get hurt, ago. so no matter he don't play enough to get hurt. But um, <laughs> I spoke about Paul George. Uh, Skyview in the chat room want to know you guys' opinion on that. What did y'all think about uh, Paul George getting double teamed at the end to prevent him breaking Wilt's forty-two point All-Star record? 
I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Kind of corny, but I ain't really. I thought it was corny, kind of corny, but I didn't really care. Yeah. Honestly, I don't care. Yeah. And honestly, I, I I like the fact that Will still got that record because I got a little Will bias because I'm from the crib. Yeah. But no, yeah, for care. me, I wouldn't have put it this way. Like I mentioned. Paul George getting 41. You didn't hear me really mention the fact that they didn't let him get the record. I, you know, it, it, like B also said, it is kind of corny. Like, why y'all sweating Paul George like that? Maybe because they just didn't want somebody who isn't the ultimate superstar in the league to have the record. But um, yeah. I bet you if LeBron was close to it, they did. Yeah, they probably I mean, LeBron let, let LeBron have it. The but, boy um, had 41 last year, uh, Westbrook. Yeah. Well, but it's like, they I, like don't said, want him. I didn't. I didn't care enough to make a big deal out of it. I'm like, okay, so what? He didn't get it. <laughs> but so I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I was about to say it might I be a little bush league. The whole All Star game is George. bush league. It is ironic though that they don't play defense the whole game and score damn near 200 points, but they don't let they don't want to let my man get one more bucket. But yeah, I guess hey. I guess the fact that it's Paul George, I just don't care enough. But I mean, it used to be. It used to be they would play defense in the fourth quarter anyway. Like they stopped doing that. Oh, they didn't in this game. No. Yeah, until they did not. Except for on him. <laughs> except for on Paul. Yo, they Jordan. did not play defense. They was like, no, we will not. And work I, I, I also don't like letting someone get any record. You know what I'm saying? Shot the Brett Favre, you loser. But I'm not with letting that? someone get a record anyway. Um, yeah. Real sports fans know what I'm talking about. But it's Brett funny, Favre it's like, you know, y'all could have played defense on him when he had 29. Y'all had to wait till he had 41. Yeah, <laughs> uh, according, according to Russell Westbrook, they didn't even know he had 41. I don't believe him. He definitely needs more people. Mm-hmm. So Westbrook, back to back MVPs in the All Star game, which is cool. He's one of my. So people can't even hate on him. Paul George, Westbrook, you know, they're two of my top five favorite players in the league right now. So good to see them shine. Favorite the shootout between Steph and Clay. Um, that was exciting. When's the last time you guys thought the three point contest was so exciting? Not even the product, but the the, the way we look forward to the three point contest. Craig Hodges. Yeah, Craig Hodges. It wasn't exciting. You weren't looking forward to Craig Hodges shooting the ball. You crazy, Craig Hodges. <laughs> Craig Hodges. <laughs> My man, Craig Hodges. Um, possibly. I mean, of course, we like that Larry after Bird the here. fact. After we found out what what the whole uniform was all about, and yeah, you know, after Bird, the, I'll keep it a bean. I don't even remember Craig Hodges shooting. <laughs> Larry Bird, obviously. Um, who else? I was and, like, I don't remember being excited before the contest. I was excited when Mike got in it. Just and then, and Mike even after it, because back then Mike I ain't like Larry up. Bird, so I wasn't happy. I only brag about that now. Like, yo, Larry was so cocky, he put the finger up. But back then, I was like, f him. Yo, um, Put your um Michael Jordan. Jordan. The Michael Jordan honestly, year because he stuck it up so bad that it was very enjoyable. Although the NBA erased all footage of Michael Jordan stinking at the three point contest. I've never seen him in that contest since then. I've never seen mm-hmm. footage of that since then. I'm just like, just up. like they got rid of all, the, jerseys, all the footage of Mike in the Wizards jersey. That doesn't exist no more. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me. Yeah, see. man. So. I mean, it was, it was definitely it was definitely an amazing weekend, man. And you know, the, the thing about the All Star break is it lets me know that it's close to the second half of the season when things really turn up in the NBA. Um, turn up, you know what I'm saying? So you got to see, like you said, you saw Clay and uh and Curry go at it. But here's my question about Clay and Curry: like they're still on pace for this record. What you mm-hmm. guys think about that? Mm. Um, I. Mm. I mean, there's only five more games. They have to pretty much finish the season out without losing five more games. That ah, it might be easier said than done because I was looking at the schedule. They they play some of the better teams um, who might have a little bit more to play for in the uh, you know the, the the second half of the season. Um, but the way Golden State has been rolling, like you know, if they can stay injury free. I think they'll. I think they'll make a big push, and I think they will get this record. Um, shoot, when you have four losses in the half of the season where there was actually more games, if you come in healthy, you know you got less games to to lose less than five. I think they can do it. You do the okay. on fire right now. I definitely think that they can do it. I think the only thing that's going to prevent them from doing it is injury. The, the, it, it, it's not going to be 
chemistry. I mean, them dudes love to play together. They're having fun. Their system is amazing. I I, I just see somebody gets injured, may disrupt chemistry a little bit, possibly, you know, big welding goes down or something like that. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's it's pretty much in the bag. I, I looked at the same thing Dev did, their schedule. They actually do have a tougher schedule the second half than they did the first half. Um, and also, I think about pressure. Like, you know, as it starts to get close, do they start to feel the pressure? And also, do teams step their game up? Because you, know you know how the league is. They start Play, they're going to get their best shot like, from everybody. Yeah, they're going to start getting their best shot. But, I mean, they definitely have an amazing team that's loaded in terms of depth. So, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Well, let me tell you, like, some of the some of the notable um, matchups. Um, of course, they got they got the Clippers coming up on Saturday. Um, as long as it's not the playoffs, the Clippers are a formidable opponent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got OKC coming up on the twenty seventh of February and the and March third, so they got a. They got to beat OKC two more times. Um, they play the Clippers. Play Spurs like again. Uh, let's see. From there, it gets pretty good. They got the Spurs on March nineteenth. Clippers again on March twenty third. Um, they've had Dallas in the mix twice. I didn't name them because I didn't put them in that upper upper echelon of the league. But they're not a pushover. Got the Spurs again on April seventh. So you got to beat the Spurs twice. The Clippers twice, OKC twice, and then you got Dallas sprinkled in there twice. You got Memphis in there. It's gonna be difficult, you know, you know, because you're gonna have these these upper echelon teams giving you their best shot because you know they don't want you to, to embarrass them all season long. So it's, it's gonna be difficult, but I think the fact that they have less games to 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 play and you know they still can afford to have five losses. Let's say they beat the hell out of everybody else and take a couple of losses to these teams that we said, they'd still be in pretty good shape. They just have to beat the other teams that they're supposed to beat. You can't have those letdowns. You can't lose to the Milwaukee Bucks like you did in the first half of the season. Yeah. If they can yeah. avoid the letdown games, I think they'll be they'll be cool because they'll at at least they'll split with the good team. So I got them I got them winning the record. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be close, man. I, I think this is one of the great things to look at. I think it would be completely hilarious. And I can see this happening, by the way. They get the record, and then they go in the playoffs and lose to the Spurs. That would be hilarious. Um, you know, anyway, with that being said, man. Is that who you that think, Jim, is their their biggest, like, the, the team that could possibly knock them off? According to Chris Broussard, it's the Cavaliers. <laughs> So that means they wouldn't I mean, get knocked I'm not, off I'm not, until you get to the finals. Yeah, I'm not getting into that, but I think the Spurs have a shot. Now, they did run circles around the Spurs the first time, but I just believe in uh, Popovich um, and his team. I think that in the playoffs is a different ball game. Things tend to slow down a little bit, even with uh, the Warriors. But with that being said, I think the Spurs could beat the Warriors, but also that the Warriors could sweep them. I think they're just that talented. If they get, if they get hot during the playoffs, yeah. When you when you, when you say you think when you say you think the Spurs can beat them, are you talking about beat them as in a game or beat them in a no, series? No, no, in a series. In a series. Okay. See, I see I, I don't. I think the Spurs based on being heady, being knowledgeable, being veteran, having a great coach, I think they can push. I think they can push them, but I don't think they can beat them in a series. I, I mean, it, it's going to be tough for anybody to beat them in this series, but I think the Spurs have it yeah. because but, people look at the Spurs but, and say that the Spurs are the old team. The Spurs have gotten young on the low, and, and their two best players, I mean, you know, uh, Kawhi Leonard, the best player in the world, and um, mm-hmm. LaMarcus Aldridge <laughs> are putting in work right now. That was, mm-hmm. I was Put being sarcastic, like this, by the way. Anybody listening, I was being sarcastic. I might, I might feel the same way, like a healthy Golden State team, you know, if they can continue being as hot as they are, going to be difficult for anybody to beat. But, you know, Chris Broussard saying that Cleveland has the best chance to knock them off, I don't necessarily agree with that. If I had to rank if I had to rank the teams that, you know, could possibly knock them off in a playoff scenario, 
you would have to start probably with the Spurs. I say oh, OKC, okay, okay, as long okay, as you got see. a healthy Durant and Westbrook, you always have a chance at least. So I say Spurs, uh, uh, OKC, and then Cleveland might be third on that list of you know teams that might be able to knock these these. 18 month juggernauts off. So I don't know, but yeah, we'll see, man. Yeah, you be low key, we'll you be low key dissing them with that 18 month juggernaut comment. I heard you say it a couple of times. You be low key. Nah, I don't be dissing them. No, because a lot of that when I talk about the 18 month thing is, is Steph, and I'm a big Steph fan. I always have been, but at the same time, you know, you see lists where he's put on there as the number four point guard of all time, and I'm like, okay, no Steph Curry has been a good player for his entire career. He has been a great player for the past 18 months. You can't put him as the number four point guard of all time after an 18 month run. Just like we talked about earlier, like with the whole Kirk cousin situation. Okay. You got to show me some more. Like Steph is tearing the league up right now. And, And in his case, I'm not saying show me some more to show me that you're great. We know he's great and we know this is his time, but you have to show me some more to be put in the top five point guards of all time. Like, you have to, you have little, to do it. You play. have to do it repeatedly in tough situations. You have to do it in signature games. It takes a lot to make your way into any type of top five, even top all 10 time. conversation for me, uh, especially all, yeah, all time. Like it's not even, so, so it's not just the 18 month thing. It's you got to give us, five, six, seven years of dominance. And then on top of that, you can't get into, you know, the conference finals and and trick it off. Or you can't get into the finals and go, you know, two for three or something like that. You have you to know, be you know what's funny about that? To to sustain it. I was reading um I was I was in one of the Facebook groups just reading because I, I tend to not get in arguments in them jobs because people don't talk logic. But I saw someone make that point. They said Steph really hasn't been pushed yet. I mean, mm-hmm. look at the great players, whether it was Isaiah getting pushed by the Bulls or the Celtics or Magic getting pushed by the Celtics or, or even the Bulls or Michael getting pushed by, by the Knicks or, um, you know, they, and, and they went on a long list of some of the great he players. Might not how, get pushed, kicking everybody yeah, they, they, and, they, and they were saying that Steph hasn't really been challenged in this, in this you know, a little bit of time now. Granted, he has a long career ahead of him, hopefully. Um, you know, he had injury uh, issues early on. But they were saying he doesn't have that signature moment or or signature series or anything where he got pushed. And I'm like, you know, I was just thinking about that because I saw someone write it. I was trying to process it and see what I thought about that. But um, it's funny that you brought that up because I saw someone yeah. else with the same kind of comment. Um, because they, they made that leap, here, like from a maybe from a I don't know playoff team to champions. So they didn't have that learning curve. But go ahead, my bad. Yeah, but. Before- but what I'm saying, before we get out of here, we got a call from the ATL. We got the homie Nodge on the line. Let's bring Nodge on real quick. Nodge, what's up, Nodge? Hey, not much, man. I'm good, man. How y'all brothers feeling? Oh, good, man. We, we, no complaints, no complaints. What's going on? Uh, not much, man. I wanted to get at y'all uh, about a couple things y'all talking about tonight, man. Uh, this boring okay. trade deadline that they hyped up all week and then gave us all these hey, second hey, rounders. Such a disappointment. Uh, no power. Nobody. <laughs> D leagues and financial transactions, man, that bored the hell out of me. Uh that three point contest thing y'all were talking about, dude, y'all dead on with that. And the one thing I'll add is the dunk contest has become so unpredictable and we expect it to be bad that it's made us anticipate the three point contest with a little more <laughs> than what we right, were right. back in the day. Right. right. So you know what I mean? So this year we got the surprise, you know what I mean, the past two years really. But Normally, man, we kind of down on it, so now it's made us like put some extra on that three point contest. But yeah, man, it was good to see two teammates in it. That's, that's a surprising thing. Uh, as far as that playoff picture, man, look, Golden State's getting that one seed, and that's all that really matters. It don't matter if they get the record or not. If you get that one seed, that means in the second round, you get whoever the scraps are, and that two seed has to the Spurs Thunder. They got to fight it out, and you get the winner of that. So you avoid having to play both of them, and that, that's the most important thing as far as that playoff uh, picture. Is right, concerned. and you'll and you'll get the winner of that. They'll probably battle, and you probably would have swept the eighth seed or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. Now, as, as far as them getting the record, uh, I doubt they'll get it, but they got a shot to do it. 
And I don't say that just from a standpoint of their talent, because we already know what they are. But, right. man, schedule losses are a month. You know what I mean? That yeah. Milwaukee Bucks loss earlier in the season, that was a schedule loss. Uh, you back had an back. overtime game with Boston, uh-huh. back-to-back, and you lose to a young athletic team that was ready to run that night. So that can happen to you a lot during the season. And just somebody having – two people having a shooting slump, you know what I mean, two games or, or whatever, then you get close to losing it and you decide to rest people because the playoff and the chip is what matters no matter what. The record would be nice, but that's always secondary. So I'm, I'm just man. looking at it from that standpoint, man. But, yeah, the only, only people who actually did, did work out here, it looks like, was Cleveland and getting rid of the carcass of Verizal and bringing in a, a somewhat, <laughs> you know, them, you know, somewhat reliable uh, role player. And then Detroit. Yeah. And he's, a, he's, and a, he's another know, big that, that's going to stretch the, the floor. Like while, while LeBron's doing everything, slashing the paint, you know, he got another big like Kevin Love and, and Fry that can stand out there and hit threes off of his, you know, off of his passes. So, you know, yeah. it, it might make them a little bit softer down low, but this is the way they want to play. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it, but I, think it was a I, I don't good like move. Cleveland's versatility of lineups, though, still right now. Because I feel like when Golden State puts that death lineup out there with Draymond at center, and you know what I mean, Harrison at yeah. the four. They can't Kennedy match that. Play man, what what are they gonna do? You know what I mean? Uh, they're still scared to put Love at center, which I think is the only option they have uh, if they want to get the most out of that Max guy. Play him twenty minutes at center, something. Get a small lineup, do something. But as it is right now, uh, they just look like they're gonna go to the finals and get ran. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might might be worse than last year. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It might be. Yeah. If Golden oh, State yeah. is healthy, like, yeah, it could be. It could get worse than it did last year. All right, yeah, man. We'll, even, oh, go, go okay, ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm I'm say, even within that, how many Warriors got to go down before you put even money and say the Cavs got to – like, I, I think you need two starters. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just have one injury and say Cleveland can beat them. Yo, that's two. true. Yo, because they, they can beat Cleveland on, without Steph. Deep. They can beat Cleveland <laughs> without Steph. Without Steph, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Maybe without Clay. No, I don't know without Clay. Yeah, without Clay? I, I, yeah, I bet on it all day. Yeah. But, yeah, y'all keep holding it down, man. Good show. With all right, now, thank, thanks for your call, man. Peace. Yep. All right, so, yeah, before we get out of here, we just, you know, just read some of these trades that happened. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the next the, the next time the Morris twins gonna roll on somebody, it might be in Washington because uh, <laughs> Markeith has been traded uh, to Washington. He he's no longer he it, with with the Suns. He was shipped to Washington in exchange for Dewan Blair, Chris Humphreys, and a protected future first round pick. A bag um, of donuts, a box of nickels. <laughs> and and what we were talking about uh, when we had Naj on the line, um, the Cleveland Cavaliers landed Channing Fry. Um, they got him from Orlando in a three-team deal that included the Trailblazers and the uh, uh, oh, it was the Magic and the Trailblazers. Cleveland will send a 2018 first round pick to Portland in exchange for taking on Barajal's salary. Um, Jared Cunningham and a Blazers second rounder goes to Orlando and Cleveland gets Channing Fry, another big to stretch the floor, you know, when LeBron's doing yeah, his thing yeah. in the paint. Um, he's only at Fry is averaging 5.2 points, 3.2 rebounds a game. And we know that Fry, even though he's 6'10, refuses to go. Inside the three-point line, very oh. unpowerful forward. So that's what he very is. Your man, um, born ready, is headed to the Grizzlies. So another dude to to add to that crazy locker room. Um, and you know, Yo, we'll we'll talk about some of the other stuff on our Facebook page because it's time for us. To These are some out. of the. This is the worst trade deadline ever, man. But uh, thanks for trying to make it interesting, Des. Bottom All line right. is, people are <laughs> hype about a guy moving teams that scores five points a game. Anyway, yo, that's about like Thunder got point. Randy Foy. <laughs> My man averages like one point one points per quarter. <laughs> yo, 
Anyway, thanks for joining us in the war room, everybody. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, the calls we called in. We appreciate it. Those we didn't get to, we apologize. To next week, live right here, or as always, on the uh, War Room Sports Podcast Network. Listen to us as well as all of our shows. We'll continue to look into the second half of the NBA season and a whole lot more. Enjoy your week and listen. We'll be right back here next week. Check out everything social media, our blogs, webcasts, everything, all of our podcasts, warroomsports.com. Warroomsports.com for everything. Also, make sure to pick up my book, Sports the Book, at sportsthebook.com or warroomsports.com. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. And we'll see you chumps in the top. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.